Hi, and welcome to Bible Buddy. This is day number 23. We will be reading from Exodus 6 and 7 and Psalm 9. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy word, which tells me of your great love and your great salvation for me in Jesus Christ, your Son. And Lord, thank you for giving me eternal life. Amen. Okay, I will be reading from Genesis, Exodus 6 and 7. Then the Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. He will feel the force of my strong hand. He will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. And God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, to and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them, and I reaffirmed my covenant with them under its terms. I promised to give them the land of Canaan, where they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel, who are now slaves to the Egyptians, and I am well aware of my covenant with them. Therefore, Say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, I will free you from your oppression, and I will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then even will know that I am then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. So Moses told the people of Israel that the Lord had said, but they refused to listen any more. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel to leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected, my own people won't listen to me anymore. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I am such a clumsy speaker. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them orders for the Israelites and for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to lead people of Israel out of Egypt. These are the ancestors of some of the clans of Israel. The sons of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, were Hanuk, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Their descendants became the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jamil, Jamin, Ohad, Chakin, Zohar, and Shal. Shal's mother was a Canaanite woman. Their descendants became the clans of Simeon. These are the descendants of Levi, as listed in their family records. The son of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Marari. Levi lived to be 137 years old. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimei, each of whom became the ancestors of a clan. The descendants of Kohath included Amron, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. Kohath lived to be 133 years old. Then the descendants of Merari included Mali and Mushi. These are the clans of the, the Levites, as listed in their family records. Anram married his father's sister, Jehobed, and she gave birth to his sons, Aaron and Moses. Aram lived to be 137 years old. The sons of Israel were Korah, Nephag, and Zikri. The sons of Uziel were Mishio, Elsaphon and Sithri. Aaron married Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab, the, and the sister of Nashon. And she gave birth to his sons, Nadab, Abihu, Elizar, and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Asher, Ikana, and Ab Abisab. Their descendants became the clan of Korah. Eliezer, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Putio, and they gave birth to his sons, Phinehas. These are the ancestors of the Levite families, listed according to their clans. The 
The Aaron and Moses named in this list are the same ones to whom the Lord said, Lead the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt like an army. It was Moses and Aaron who spoke to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, about leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. Then the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt. He said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I am telling you. But Moses argued with the Lord, saying, I can't do this. I am such a clumsy speaker. Why should Pharaoh listen to me? Then the Lord said to Moses, Pay close attention to this. I will make you seem like God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron. I will be your prophet. Tell Aaron everything I commanded you. And Aaron must command Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. But I will make Pharaoh's heart stubborn so I can multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Even then Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you. So I will bring down my fist on Egypt. Then I will rescue my forces, my people, the Israelites, from the land of Egypt in great acts of judgment. When I raise my powerful hand and bring out the Israelites, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 when they made their demands to Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh will demand, show me a miracle. When he does this, said, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down in front of Pharaoh, and it will become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what the Lord had commanded them. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called, on, called in his own wise men and sorcerers. And Egypt, these Egyptians, ma Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. They threw down their staffs, which also became serpents. But then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Pharaoh's heart, however, remained hard. He refused to listen, just as the Lord has predicted. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn, and he still refuses to let the people go. So go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes down to the river. Stand on the bank of the Nile and meet him there. Be sure to take along the staff that turned into a snake. Then announce to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to tell you, Let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. Until now, you have refused to listen to him. So this is what the Lord says, I will show you that I am the Lord. Look, I will strike the water of the Nile with this staff in my hand and the river will turn to blood. The fish in it will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink any water from the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, take your staff and raise your hand over the waters of Egypt, all its rivers, canals, ponds, and all the reservoirs. Turn all the water to blood. Everywhere in Egypt, the water will turn to blood. Even the water stored in wooden bowls and stone pots. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. As Pharaoh and all of his officials watched, Aaron raised his staff and struck the water of the Nile. Suddenly, the whole river turned to blood. The river in the river, died. the fish in the river died, and the water became so foul that the Egyptians couldn't drink it. There was blood everywhere throughout the land of Egypt. But again, the magicians of Egypt used their magic, and they too turned water into blood. So Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord has had predicted. Pharaoh returned to his place and put the whole thing out of his mind. Then the Egyptians dug along the river bank to find drinking water, for they couldn't drink the water from the Nile. Seven days passed from the time the Lord struck the Nile. And we need to go to Psalm number 9. Okay, Psalm 9. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. My enemies retreated. retreated. They staggered and died when you appeared. For you have judged in my favor. From your throne you have judged with fairness. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have erased their names forever. 
The enemy is finished in endless ruins. The cities you uprooted are now forgotten. But the sun, but the Lord reigns forever, executing judgment from His throne. He will judge the world with justice and rule the nations with fairness. The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know Your name trust in You. For You, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for You. Sing praises to the Lord who reigns in Jerusalem. Tell the world about his unforgettable deeds, for he who avenges murder cares for the helpless. He does not ignore the cries of those who suffer. Lord, have mercy on me. See how my enemies torment me. Snatch me back from the jaws of death. Save me so I can praise you publicly at Jerusalem's gates. So I can rejoice that you have rescued me. The nations have fallen into the pit they dug for others. Their own feet have been caught up in the trap they set. The Lord is known for His justice. The wicked are trapped in their own deeds. The wicked will go down to the grave. This is the fate of all the nations who ignore God. But the needy will not be ignored forever. The hopes of the poor will not always be crushed. Arise, O Lord! Do not let Mere mortals defy you. Judge the nations, make them tremble in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know they are merely human. Thank you for reading along. Proceed tomorrow.